It's time to mix things up on Scrapbook Soup. Today's ingredients are a 3D mixed media shadow box, recycled boxes used in new ways, and a paper quilt and flower sampler all in today's Scrapbook Soup. Today's Scrapbook Soup has been brought to you in part by Michael Stores Incorporated, where creativity happens. Michaels.com, Sakura Color Products of America, SakuraofAmerica.com. I'm here with Jen Mason, who is the editor of Cloth Paper Scissors magazine, and she's got a fun mixed media shadow box for us. So Jen, tell us how we're going to do this. All right, well this is the project we're making here. Um, it's a monoprint in the background, but I've also mm -hmm. painted with some paint pens on the inside cool. of this frame. Yes, it's a great technique, and because all the paint's inside, it can't get scratched off. Oh, I love that. So to get started, we have to do our monoprint. And, okay. Um, we have a few supplies that we need mm -hmm. to have ready because when you work, you need to work fast before the paint um, dries. Okay. So we have some acrylic um, sheets here, plexiglass okay. sheets. If they have a non-glare side on them, you want to use the side that doesn't have that on the smoother side or your paint will just stick to it. Ooh, don't want that. So we have two of those. This one we're going to ink up. This is where we're going to do our painting. And then this is the paper we're going to transfer to. Okay. You need to have a couple brayers mm -hmm. and then also some tools for um, actually decorating mm -hmm. the um, printing plate. Creating some do. texture. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. So we're going to starting with ready. some acrylic paint. Yes. I see that. And mono printing just means mono for one. You're only going to get one print out of it. It's kind of a fun way to experiment and see what you get. Exactly. And you can use different, you can experiment with different kinds of paints. Um, some will last longer, so you could actually get a second print, which they Ooh. call a ghost print. Ooh. Um, because it's lighter in color? Exactly, okay. exactly. And sometimes the ghost print is what you want. And I'm going to show you an example of that oh, later. you're putting all three on the brave at the same three. time. And I'm actually going to be a little brave and mess that up. Mix what those I, colors up. Yeah, so what I want is an ombre, which is really okay. just this really great. An ombre is just when the colors sort of segue into each other. Exactly, okay. exactly. Cool. All right, so then we're going to move. Now that my brayer is all oh, it's inked so up, cool looking. we're going to transfer that. And I want to just ink it up to about the size okay. I want on this piece of paper here, okay. and I want a lot Oh, you're going both directions, huh? I am, I'm just... Jenna, I'm really messy, but this is making me nervous, <laughs> I have to admit. <laughs> well, you know, it's a lot of experimentation. You keep your paint wet and you just okay. keep going. Um, now I'm gonna start putting texture in it. I wanna work Bubble wrap. fast. Bubble wrap is gonna add some texture. Okay. This is from my Clementines, Ooh. and I'm gonna use a piece of wax paper over this so I don't get Keep your messy fingers pretty. Hands. Yes. I'm going to actually set that, give Thank that to you. you. And then I've cut out shapes out of wax paper. Mm -hmm. I'm going to and you could cut heart. those by hand. You could use a die cut machine, exactly. a punch, a punch whatever. Exactly. And then while that's still wet, mm -hmm. I can see exactly where it's going. Okay. And I'm going to use this brayer. I'm using a Are rubber brayer. Are you pushing brayer. really hard? I am. This okay. way I don't have to use a great big steel press. And then magically that's going to stick to this. Mm. And now I can... Do that Go the again. other way. I see. And you are. I see you're putting some muscle into I that. Am. I want to get as much ink as possible. And does the brayer, does it matter if it's rubber or acrylic? It doesn't really matter. <gasps> and so then the wax we have paper our created print. a void. Exactly. That is so cool. So this, and I'm going to set, give this to you here. Okay. The other thing we can do um, Thank you. is also doodle in our paint if we were doing this, which I forgot to mention Ooh. earlier, which gives another great texture. Okay. So let's move this aside. I'll do that one for the ghost print later. Excellent, excellent. All right, I'm going to let you move okay. these two things over while these. I start on the next part. And the next part is actually working on our um, art that we just finished okay. and is dry. I've already started doodling on this. Oh, I see. I'm going to and this is where on this one you did doodle into exactly. the paint before. Okay. Yes. And now Very I'm cool. echoing that mm -hmm. by adding some more doodles with the paint. Oh, I love how your doodles just scratch and circly. Yes. And you're using a permanent marker. Yes, that's yes. important. This is um, it's a paint pigment um, mm -hmm. marker, which is lovely because it works nice. But you can use all sorts of different pens. I have some 
um, permanent pens. I have some okay. of the glazed gel pens. Mm -hmm. So you would doodle on this and write and journal as much as you wanted. And okay. then we have to start working on the really fun part, which is this frame here. Okay. Um, I'll take this aside for you then. All right. Or you yep, need no, it. no, go okay. right ahead. I'll that take one's it. all Thank set. Thank you. So, oh, and let me show you really quickly this here. I'm going to flip this over, is a ghost print. That is really cool. It's so much lighter. But on the other side, I was going to tell you, I love, I love, ha, 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 love, love. I love, I love how you've written the word love in there. That's yeah, so, so cute. So there's really no bad print. You can mm -hmm. always doodle and jazz it up um, when you're done. You could add is some collage Is this a stamp? On nope, that's just. That's your handwriting? That's just handwriting. Oh, you yeah. lucky, talented girl. I love girl. to handwrite. All right, I love doodling. So, but you could um, stamp, obviously. You could. Okay, so now we're working with our shadow box mm -hmm. frame. And a shadow box frame has a few different parts. We're going to set two of them aside. Okay. You have the frame part. We mm -hmm. don't need that right now. And we have what I like to call the riser. Mm -hmm. We have glass and the backing. We need to move the backing aside, too. Okay. And now we're going to take that print we finished before. We're going to set it under here. Now, we're going to use um, some markers. We're going to use a permanent marker. Okay to be our guide because what we're really going to want to do is paint on the inside of this with okay. our opaque paint pens. So I'm using this just to tell me where to write when I flip it over because we're going to wash this off later. Oh. So again, here's our left. So even though it's a permanent, oh, that's not a permanent marker. This is a that, permanent marker. But, but you can wash it off of glass. It's going to come off with um, window well, wipe cleaner. Or yeah. it was window cleaner. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just going to flip this over and mm -hmm. we're going to paint on the back side. So now I'm using something that's pen. definitely much more yes, permanent. Okay. Exactly. And Very I'm going to cool. actually, I just did one. I was wondering how you wrote backwards inside. That's such a smart idea. It, um, it took a while to figure out how I was going to complete this. And when I found out that you could take those permanent pens uh -huh. and actually wipe make them, them away, that's so cool. So you keep going on that. And mm -hmm. then even with the white, so I didn't give myself any white guidelines, but. I'm going to do that doodle same doodle thing here mm -hmm. on this side, which echoes the design cool. we painted in there and wrote with the blue. Oh. And when you turn that back over, now we have to clean off our yes. guidelines. So we're going to just take a wipe. Now you could use a baby window wipe? spray. Um, I haven't actually tried a baby wipe, okay. but you can use window spray. But um, and you're just using you see, a little bit of pressure. Just a little pressure, just like you were away. if you were cleaning off your mm -hmm. mirror. And I would wipe that off. I would also get the rest of this nice and clean. Yes. So um, what you want to do, though, is make sure you've got all of your space over. Sometimes you have to flip back over to see if you've gotten, if you've gotten it gotten nice it and clear. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so that's sort of the magic in that. And then oh, you would just cool. put this together. And you know, you could totally put a photo in there or something, and then you could oh, have yeah. that sort of doubling effect. You could write the person's name across exactly, the front. Exactly, yeah. And I know you brought another beautiful example yeah. with so the orange slices. Exactly. And I even tied in, it says good morning, and on the inside it says sunshine. So you can work oh, your text together and, and put a message so that way. That's so cool. That's really neat. Well, Jen, this has been an absolutely cool, cool, cool segment, and I am so excited to go home and do it. Well, excellent. Well, send me pictures when you make some monoprints. I, I can't will. wait to see them. I will. Thanks so much. We'll be right back. Joe Pearson is joining us from Michael's with another great project. And this time you're showing us how to make gift bags out of empty boxes. This is recycling at its best. You know what I love it is? It. But think of how fun it is. You know, some of the boxes are really pretty just themselves. Or you can cover them, as you can see. But it is a great recycling project. It, it is. And you never lack for supplies. They're Absolutely. always there. You know, you might have to empty out the cereal because you needed the box. But oh, that's easy. We're just, we're, <laughs> we just eat it. <laughs> we're going to start with a little box here. What I did is I, I taped. Now, some of your boxes may still be closed at a, you know, on one end. But mm -hmm. we've taped it shut. So we make sure it's going to tape shut. So we just need to decide which way our box is going to go and then we're going to take and I'm just going to cut the top of this box away because this is what's going to be the opening of our box. So you're going to use it horizontally right? This one I am mm -hmm. and again you know you can look and you can use the box I mean you know really whichever way you want to. Add so. a pride or yeah absolutely so we're going to take this away first okay now one of the things we need to remember of course we want to put a handle on it so we're going to go ahead and we are going to punch a hole in the side before we tape the other side shut. So I'm just gonna use my my uh, punch, there. punch here, okay? Now, if you wanted to, you could go back and add an eyelet to it if you wanted to finish it off, mm -hmm. but we're just gonna go ahead and do this. So now again, we're gonna tape. So I wanna make sure that I've got the box taped you know, pretty good. So we're going to use some yeah, double stick tape here. Yeah, we don't want it to here. fall apart. Right, right, especially if you're giving somebody this as yeah. a gift. So <laughs> we're gonna true. put our tape on here and we'll close that flap 
So you want to kind of recreate your box like it's supposed to look. So we need to see that we need to go back and put some tape here too. Here, let me hold I'll that down. I'll let you hold that. So you. I'm going to put it on this flap here. Oh, that's here. a good idea. Yeah, this is, yeah. this is going to go here. Okay, so we'll peel this off, and then I'll let and then you close just pop that it up. Together. And then you'd use your heavy duty punch right. and make We're a gonna, hole in the other side too for the We're handle. We're gonna do that. So let's go through here and do that. We nice. thought what was kind of fun is, now you could use ribbon. I mean, you could really use anything you wanted mm -hmm. to for a handle, okay? But we just used some lightweight aluminum um, wire. And I thought what was fun is we just went and put yellow and white pony beads on it because we thought it looked like popcorn. That's like popcorn does. So look, <laughs> we're just going to go and we're just going to put the handles in our box like so. And that this wire is really easy to bend, mm -hmm. so it did that. So look, then we can just take some fun little, if you want to put some tissue paper in there, you can do you can do that. And think how fun this would be to just give someone and with some popcorn and some movie tickets. And look, that is a great all, isn't idea. that a great little gift yeah, idea? you could even put a little DVD in there, too. Absolutely. That's a great birthday gift. That would be a great to give yeah, somebody. Yeah, a holiday then gift. Then they don't even have to leave home. Well, that's true. Absolutely. <laughs> so, but I want to show you some of the other ones we did, because we've got uh -huh. some really cute other ideas here. Again, any kind of box is going to work. Mm -hmm. So this actually is what some paint came in, came in. And we put a double handle on this one, but we went back, and you know glitter is my favorite thing in life. Yeah, I can't so, imagine why. I know, I know. <laughs> the so, glitter queen. The glitter queen. You are. So we just went, and we did, look, we just took the, actually the visual part of the box and covered it with some fun glitter glue. That is awesome. Okay, so and just easy added some embellishments. But this one here, we actually took, and we took the box apart, and turn it inside out so that all the decoration from the box was on the inside. And then look, we just covered it with some great scrapbook paper. Oh, what a great use of all, because we all have papers left over, right? I know, it's all the scraps, and you hate to out. throw them away. So yeah. then just some fun little flowers on there. Mm -hmm. That way we added, you know, we took ribbon. And then this little one in front, what a cute little napkin holder. Scrapbook paper is so gorgeous besides now because it has such beautiful prints. You can cut things out, whether it's a rose or a bird, right. you know, whatever. Uh -huh. And we just cut the box down and added that on there and put the ribbon handles on there. And look what a cute little napkin holder it is. That for, is great. And you know, that party. would be fun to coordinate like for a party because you made the invitations, the banners and everything. Then use the paper on a box and put all the napkins in there. Absolutely. And I you know, it's a great it. little takeaway to give to someone too. So, you know, the fun thing is, you know, get together and maybe do... Maybe have three or four of these boxes on hand so that when you need to go to a party, you're not out at the last minute scrambling for a gift right. bag. Well, I know you made that one for me because it's full of tea it, bags. Absolutely. <laughs> we did make that for you. And then, again, that's just another different kind of wire. And just took and, and actually cut a decoration out of the box instead of cutting it straight. You know, you could take, you could use decorative edge scissors or whatever yeah. you wanted oh, you to. You can use any kind of embellishment. Joe, I love this. Thank you you're so much. You're quite welcome. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Paper flowers are so much fun, and especially paper rosettes, and they're very easy to make. Jennifer McCord joins us from Exacto, and you're going to show us how we can make paper rosettes for uh, table settings, for gift bags, cards, scrapbook pages, just anywhere we want to put them, right? That's right. So we'll get started by cutting strips for our rosette. So we'll use a rotary trimmer and our guidelines here. Yeah, let me move that. Ruler, cut nice and flat for you. Okay, so we'll cut about an inch and a half. Mm -hmm. We'll create two strips. So we'll start with one and two, and we're going to join these together so they do, doesn't really matter what size as long as they're exactly the same size. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we'll cut our strips, and then what we'll do is we'll lightly score one of them, or actually both of them. We'll start with this one and we'll lightly score it at half inch increments. And this is going to help us with our pleating or our accordion folding so that all the pleats are exactly the same. That's right. And then you'll see I'm scoring just about half the page and that's so that when we fold it we get a nice round edge on the outer corners. Okay. That's a good tip. I mean, you know, the rosettes, they have creased their uh, sharp creased edges all the way around, which is a nice look too, but this gives it a little bit of a different look. I like that. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be too precise really as you go through. Okay. So we can fold a little bit, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. So once you've scored your whole page, then you would fold it accordion style. So back and forth. It is nice to have those lines. Mm -hmm. It makes it 
go really, really so fast. So much faster. And so I once see you're the done effect with that, here. That's mm -hmm. with, it, with it being rounded, or fl fluted, I guess we could say. It's very good. That's right. So once you've done that for both of your pages, mm -hmm. then what you'll want to do is glue them together. So you see the seam here, and then we have our nice accordion fold. So we'll set that aside for a moment. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll cut a small circle. Now one tip is to use a smaller piece of paper. That way you can pivot it as you cut. We want to make sure to get a nice firm grip on the center point. You turn like so, and then you can pivot, again with overlapping strokes as you go through. And then go all the way around. All and you are around. moving slowly because it is, um, it is thick. Rather thick paper. So. There we go. There we go. Our little compartment our opened up while you were doing mm -hmm. that, where you store the uh, uh, graphite <laughs> if you just want to draw circles, and you have your extra blades That's in there. Too. That is so cool. I like the mm -hmm. way it's stuck in there. That's great. So our next step. So then, um, a fun tip from home is you can use your cookie cutter to help you position the rosette. So if you want to go ahead and place it. There we go. Put that in the there center. We go. And then while you do that, I'll take some tacky glue here on our circle. You know, rosettes always have that bad habit of popping up. So I'm just gonna squish this down in the center. There we mm -hmm. go. And then we put it and in upside down too. So we'll wanna flip it. There we go. So now it's firmly in there, that's gonna hold it in mm -hmm. place, we'll turn it over, and now, right. so then on the let back, push it down. Then we have our glued circle, and we place that to keep the rosette together, okay. just like so. And then, of course, you want to set that aside, let it dry thoroughly, and then so we have our our glued product here. So um, then we'll want to focus on the base. Okay. So for the base, you take a wooden spool. And then you will cut strips, which we've already done. So you'll cut about an inch strip here to wrap around the base, and then a quarter inch strip for extra decoration. So I'll take my glue stick here, and we'll adhere these two together. You know, I like projects like this because it does allow you to use all those extra pieces of paper mm -hmm. and extra scraps of paper that we have left over from all our paper crafting projects. That's right, so we put that together. Like so, and then we will spin this around our spool. And then as we get towards the end, wrapping it around, then we'll use more of our glue stick. And just to attach the mm -hmm. ends. You know, I love these spools because you can, we're uh, covering it with paper, but you can put all kinds of little sayings on there that people mm -hmm. can actually unfasten and they can unroll them, just lots of different options. Right, so, okay, so I'll then take we have that. that. And then for the stem of the flower, we'll take a dowel, mm -hmm. and then um, we need leaves, of course, so what we'll do is we'll cut quarter inch strips, again yeah, using our trimmer. Let this out of the way for you. So, take this, grab some nice green paper for our leaves, and then again, these are just going to be very thin strips for our leaves. There you go. It's nice when you can cut really thin things. Mm -hmm. And then back up the other direction. Just a couple there. Mm -hmm. So we take those, and then using a pencil or pen from home, we'll curl the leaf and roll it like so, so that it's nice and tight and comes out with a nice curled look. So like that. Probably make that. Oh, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. And then can do that with the second one here as well. Of course, you can get creative and add different layers here. As many things as you want, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, okay. so we do that. And then we can trim the length of our leaves to match our dowel. And they're actually going to be stuck inside here, so we could even just tear them off, Jennifer. That's true, that's true. <laughs> so we put these two together, okay. and then using our yarn, we'll wrap this securely. Okay. 
And then what you'll want to do is kind of create a collection of string at one point, and that'll be a stopper to help with the secure it to the dowel. Right, because the hole in the so. um, in the spool is just a little bit bigger than our dowel and leaves. And you ha mm -hmm. you have one prepared right here. Mm -hmm. So do you want to just go ahead and put okay. that one in there? I'll set that so over that here. goes inside. There we and go. Then, We're um, going to add well, our flower. Right. And then what you'll want to do is add just a tip of glue. Uh -huh. And then when you place your flower in, it'll be nice and secure for the long run. And like so. And then all we have to do to finish it up is add a button. That's right. Jennifer, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Well, we saw lots of ideas and supplies today, and now it's time to put it all together with packing tape transfers. That's right. Packing tape is one of the best ways to make an easy transfer. And there are lots of different ways to do this. I'm actually going to use a magazine. You mm -hmm. can use any magazine on Earth. Anything will work at all. And I'm just going to flip through this pretty magazine with these gorgeous images. And I'm just going to find a random image that appeals to me. I like this one. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tear out that page in the magazine. So I just rip it with abandon. And then I'm simply going to take a piece of regular old packing tape, nothing special about it. I'm going to rip it off. And I'm going to place it right across the part of the image I want to capture. So I want those blue buttons and that pretty orange cozy. Okay, nice then and bright. Then I am going to use perhaps the most important tool that any of us owns. And you never lose it, It's right? attached right to your hand, exactly. So then I'm just going to burnish that really well with my thumb. And now I have something exciting, which is I have some wrinkles in my tape. Uh -huh. And that's actually going to create something really interesting in the transfer, which you will see and I'm excited about. It's going to okay. create a little so bit of a void. So when we have wrinkles, then it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It's actually kind no, of important. it's kind of fun. So once I have burnished it as much as possible, I'm just going to take some scissors and I'm going to go ahead. And it's not important that you cut carefully. I just like to cut outside the edges of the paper as well as I can. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to give it a little bath. Oh. And this is just regular water. It's not important that it be hot or cold. You might like it to be warm because your fingers can get thinking, a little yes, bit cold after a while. That would be nice. And I do want to say, if you're using images from a magazine, you just have to remember that that's somebody else's work and you can't sell it or publish it or pass it off as your own in any way. You can certainly give it as a gift and make it for yourself, but that's just respect other people's work. Right. So I just have it in here. And now I'm going to take that same tool Maybe I'll switch to this tool. <laughs> and I'm just going to rub away at the paper with my finger. And I'm just rubbing and rubbing. Because we're letting the water absorb into the paper, Exactly. Right? And once the water has absorbed in the paper, what's going to happen is I'm going to be able to just magically, can you see how it's starting to uh -huh. come away? I'm going to be able to just rub that paper away. And once it becomes really wet, it's just going to slide right off there. This is one of my favorite parts. It's right now, before the magic it, reveal. If you left, if you left it, it in there, for a day, it for a matter. year, for half an hour, it absolutely would not matter. Here we go. So it's coming out. And you can see that, oops, I'm throwing stuff everywhere. You'd probably want to use a slightly larger container, <laughs> shall we say. It might be better. And you can see, ooh. Look that at is that really beautiful. Pretty. It transferred right through, and you can see it's transparent. So obviously, you can put it on top of anything, and it'll take the color or pattern of whatever is, is underneath it. it which now is you really have a second cool. technique, right? I do. Well, so sometimes you want to get something that's a little bit larger because mm -hmm. packing tape is limiting. It's only so wide. So let's go back into the magazine for a second, and let's pull another page out. And now let's say that I want to get, maybe from this advertisement, I want to get something wide. So I am just going to take my packing tape, put it down where I want it, and then I'm just going to overlap the second piece. Okay? And as mm -hmm. long as these two pieces are touching, then you absolutely and completely can do the transfer exactly the same way. And then that's how we did this card right over here. Because this I is put, wider than the packing tape. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I put two pieces down right next to each other and then lifted that beautiful piece of artwork right up. And you know, that was a stitched piece of artwork and you can see the stitching lines in there. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. And then all of this jewelry, this necklace, isn't that cute? That is so sweet. It's it really just a is. plastic tile, uh -huh. you know, and the packing tape transfers right on the back of that. Now, how did you attach the transfer to the plastic any tile? Any clear adhesive will work. Any glue it, at all mm -hmm. that will dry clear works magic. You know, gel medium and I are yes, kind of like this, yes. but 
Yes, Good you buddies. can use anything that's clear. <laughs> and I did earrings the same way. And actually, speaking of sticking, because anything that's white will end up being clear mm -hmm. when you do a transfer, these aren't actually glued on at all. There was enough white on this that I was able to simply take it and the packing tape itself is sticky enough to stick to the plastic. Isn't that kind of cool? Oh, that is cool. I know. And the thing, other thing that I really like about doing a packing tape transfer is normally when you transfer things, the words are backwards. Mm -hmm. But this, the words are when totally forwards. Behind, yeah. They're exactly the right mm -hmm. way because you don't even have to put it behind because whatever you lift off will be exactly the way you do it. And there's another necklace down here that has that little camel transfer in there. Mm -hmm. And then I brought this quilt. And this is a big packing tape transfer, many different layers that just oh, all it got, because it's transparent, but layered over each other. you can see where they join. I know. And then even this part of the ruffle, you can transfer scrapbook paper. And that's what that is, is I just put it on scrapbook Julie, paper. Julie, this is absolutely great. Thank you so much. And that's our soup du jour. So thanks for watching. And let us know what you think of our new format. We'd really love to hear from you. Visit ScrapbookSoupTV.com for a mix of ideas, a mix of ingredients, a mix of designers, and all of the instructions for every project found on this series of Scrapbook Soup. Create your own recipe for great scrapbooking. This is show 106. A complete set of all 13 episodes of Scrapbook Soup Series 100 is available for $39.99 plus shipping and handling. A mix of designers, techniques, and projects, all in one complete package to watch anytime. Visit ScrapbookSoupTV.com to place your order. Today's Scrapbook Soup has been brought to you in part by Michael Stores Incorporated, where creativity happens. Michaels.com, Sakura Color Products of America, SakuraofAmerica.com.